Hi, hey kids! It's time for books, so come out to Mama's house and let's rock and read. Today, I'll be reading you chapter 21 and 22 of Wayside School Beneath the Cloud of Doom. Chapter 21. Breathe. Stephen stared at the clock on the wall. What if he couldn't lift the mallet? What if he dropped it on his toe? What if he dropped it on Mr. Kids on his toe? He could be expelled. Breathe, said Jason from the desk next to him. Stephen took a breath. He stared at the clock. What if someone left a skateboard on the stairs? Then he might trip over it on his way to the gong. If we broke his leg, Mr. Kids would yell at him for being late. Breathe, said Brundy from the desk on his, on his other side. Stephen took a breath. He stared at the clock. Sometimes it seemed the hands didn't move at all. Other times he'd blink and it would be half an hour later. Time didn't always make sense at Wayside School. For lunch, for lunch, Miss Mush made pepper-only pizza. Stephen ate his slice but did not remember eating it. His only clue was that he was very thirsty and his tongue and lips burned. He returned to his seat in Miss Jules' class. He stared at the clock. Jenny was late coming over for lunch. Sorry, Miss Jules, she said. I can't find my skateboard. Oh, no! Stephen shouted. Are you all right, Stephen? Miss Jules asked him. Why did he have to pick me? Stephen moaned. If you didn't want to do it, why'd you raise your hand? I was like, everyone else had their hands raised, Stephen explained. I mean, I guess I was excited about it at the time, but now... You have cold feet, Miss Jules? Yes! exclaimed Stephen. He wondered how Miss Jules knew that. He felt like two blocks of ice. No wonder she was a teacher. But what did his frozen feet have to do with ringing in the gong? Breathe, said Miss Jules. Stephen took a breath. Miss Jules' class always had music on Friday afternoons. I'm sorry we don't have musical instruments today, she announced. They were sent out to be clean and we haven't gotten them back. What if the gong was being washed too? Will you have to bang it on a different day? Breathe, said Cathy. Stephen took a breath. So just use what you were born with, said Miss Jules. And a one, and a two. Dana loudly blew her nose. Ron twiddled his lips. Mac puffed out his cheek and popped it with a flick of her finger. Calvin and Bibi whistled. Josh started on his head and sang Jingle Bells. Paul pulled Leslie's pea tails. She shrieked, squealed or squawked, depending on the pool. Stop the music, Miss Jules suddenly shouted. And the room became instantly quiet. Stephen, you're late, she told him. I'm sorry, I was so carried away by the music. I didn't notice the time. Time, said Stephen. Now, Stephen, said Miss Jules. He remained frozen in his chair. Miss Jules asked Jason and Wendy to help. They moved to either side of Stephen and slowly lifted him to a standing position. It's time, buddy, said Jason. Time, Stephen repeated. He took one step, then stopped. Now the other leg, said Wendy. He took another step. You can do it, Stephen, cheered Cathy. Bang that gong like no one ever banged before, called Joy. Stephen walked across the room. He stepped out the door behind him he heard the entire class shout together. Breathe! Stephen took a deep breath. Chapter 22, The Moment. Stephen was worrying his way down the stairs when suddenly he spotted Jenny's skateboard right in the middle of the step. He stepped over it. Well, that was easy. And just like that, his fears vanished. Not even a cloud of doom worried him. He quickly hurried the rest of the way down. He didn't want to be late. When he reached the second floor, he could see Lewis below wheeling the gong to place. Lewis! He shouted and then jumped down the final steps. Am I late? You're right on time, said the art teacher. The gong was gigantic, almost twice as big as Stephen. He, never, he had never stood so close to it before. In the centre was a small red dot. The iron mallet hung from a hook. The mallet was longer than his arm and it's thicker too. Have you been doing your push down, Lewis asked? Stephen nodded. I'm always up to two, he said confidently. Mr. Kidswell stepped out of his office. He took one look at Stephen Knox. Who are you? This is Stephen Tillis. You chose him to bang the gong today. Hmm, him? Why would I choose him? Because you're the best principal ever, said Lewis. Well, yes, that's true, said Mr. Kidswell. I'll do my best, sir, said Stephen. That's what worries me, said the principal. Lewis handed Stephen two crumb balls. As Stephen was stuffing them in his ears, Lewis unhooked them out. He held it out to Stephen. Stephen wobbled as he took the mallet with both hands. Lewis helped him raise it to his shoulder. Mr. Kidswater checked his watch and then started the countdown. 10, 9, 8. He had to shout the numbers. Sorry. 10, 9, 8. 
He had to shout the numbers so Stephen could hear him through the cotton balls. Seven! Six! Stephen tightened his grip on the handle. Five! Four! Stephen groaned loudly as he slowly raised the iron mallet off his shoulder. It was a good thing he'd been doing all those push downs. Three! Stephen Stagg maintained his balance. Two! He concentrated on the one dot, on the red dot. One! He swung with his might and missed. He didn't miss just, he didn't just miss the red dot, he missed the gong. Lewis jumped out of the way as the weight of the mallet pulled Stephen around in a circle. The second time around the mallet banged into the gong right on the dot. Gong! Despite the cotton balls, the sound echoed inside Stephen's skull and rattled his bones. Oh. It travelled upstairs all the way to 34. Oh. He did it! shouted Mac. Yay, Stephen! yelled Jenny. Everyone in Miss Jules' class whooped and hollered. Lewis kept Stephen from falling over and took them out from him. He hooked it to the frame and then he and Stephen wheeled the gong into the principal's office. Mr Kidswell was already there standing by the door. The principal held out his big hand and said, Well done, Stephen! In the history of Westside School, Stephen was the only kid to ever shake Mr Kidswater's hand. In the future, whenever Stephen feels worried or frustrated or just plain sad, his mind will take him back to the moment the mallet struck the gong. He'll close his eyes and see the red dot. His hands will feel the weight of the iron mallet. He'll hear the sound of the gong bouncing back and forth between his ears and will feel the vibrations in his bones. And he will smile. Well, that was chapter 21 and 22 of Where's School Beneath the Cloud of Doom. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye!